Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for coming to the Sashiko live streaming. I'm sorry, I'm late. <laughs> I am late. I know I'm late. Well, there was a little bit of an emergency and... Phew. All right. So, let me, let me just... Um, let me restart over that. Thank you for coming to the Sashiko live streaming. This is the live streaming where I stitch Sashiko and while talking about sashiko and uh, this is not a lecture this is not a webinar this is not a tutorial so um i will not answer the questions about techniques such as how to do that or show me that stuff like that instead i would like to make this place as a place for us to stitch together like a moment or one hour for us to stitch together so if you can bring something to stitch together while listening to my story um that'd be really appreciated all right so let's start today i brought the topic i i don't know if i am going to talk about the morita therapy which i talked about in the previous two uh, instagram post um but let's see let's see how i'm gonna be okay let's go now i'll change the camera the emergency itself is not that big of a deal but it's a little bit confusing it was very confusing to me um how can i explain that um, because i speak both languages english and japanese i sometimes become like an in-between person and we try to be as straightforward as possible and we try, well, especially when it's business, we try to put all the numbers on the agreement. And those n numbers on the agreements are kind of sacred. We cannot change that just by saying, I want to change it. Uh, we have to both agree to change it, but in order to both agree to change it, we, you know, I have to understand what is being changed and so that I can translate properly. Um, so I thought that was not a change in the agreement, but it was probably the change in the agreement and I had to change everything around it, which is perfectly fine right now. I think it's what it is. I don't know. I'm not hundred percent sure yet, but it, it is still there yet. So, um, let's see. So my brain's a little bit there, but it is okay. So I will come back. The concept of acceptance and dualism. <laughs> um, this is the topic I made like a few days ago. So I, I will probably talk about it later on. But if you have any other topics for me to cover, that's great. Yeah, but the, the way, like business is a little difficult, especially when it is done internationally. It's not only the language, it's just how we can approach to that. And they don't open the door if one does not follow some specific procedures uh, they simply say that we cannot do that uh, but that might be because of the way to approach and that's kind of sad and it is quite important like if you are going to have a tour to japan <laughs> this might be like a advertisement of my sashiko tour uh, but if you are going to like uh, join somebody's tour, make sure that they know how to talk to the other Japanese. Uh, because you are, we are going to be the tourist, like a visitor or guest. But there is uh, kind of like a space where the guests are welcomed, but it's not really inside of the culture. And there's nothing wrong with that. If the you if you if the goal of that tour is to enjoy it as a guest, um, that's 
you know, there's nothing wrong with it. I hope that they enjoy it. Um, but in order to go deeper, in order to go to like more inside, one have to plan the visit very carefully with a lot of exchanging of emails and email is not really enough. They have to usually talk about it or in person, ideally, but in today's world, we can probably use Zoom and <laughs> for the previous Japan trip, I spent, I don't know, I think I, I spent 10 times more hours in preparation than actually doing it in Japan. Well, that's why I could, you know, we have still a good relationship and the second time shouldn't be this difficult. But the first time is always difficult and I think many people, let's say many non-Japanese people, unfortunately don't go through that because not because they don't speak English, they don't speak Japanese or not because they are foreigners, because they don't know how to make initial approach. So that's what's going on. That's what I'm trying to help in this my friend, she's my friend, so that's why I'm helping, but uh, otherwise I'm not gonna do this kind of, am I gonna, do I have a wish to make it as, as my profession, no, professions, to be a bridge between, probably not, it does not, it's too stressful, so I don't think I will do that, but you know, as a friend, I will do my best. But yeah, that's very challenging. Hello, hello. All right, so that's being said. Um, the concept. I don't know if I should talk about it because it's kind of like a psychological treatment topic so I don't know if any of you here are interested in that um, but th that's something I wrote on the Instagram in the last two days about the similarities between the Japanese approach to the psychological difficulties and Sashiko like Sashiko has been known as the meditation or calming somebody's mind and it is very true. It's very true that it has that um, effect. But it is not the purpose. Like relaxation or meditations or even like not not, not even Zen. Zen is completely different. So relaxation, meditations, mindfulness, there we go are sort of the byproduct of doing sashiko stitching and i you know I, I feel the same way but i just don't want them to just stop thinking or stop learning why it is so soothing or so helpful for the psychological uh, challenges and one can probably reach to the very easy conclusion by saying that because it's hand hand stitching, hand work. Uh, by moving your hand without thinking too much, we can um, kind of open up my brain, and that's how we feel relaxed. In our world, we have to use our brain, and using our hand, making something is always soothing, and that that is really true too. That's really true, and that's one interpretation of why it is so helpful like mindful why it is so relaxing but that's the view from western value like materialistic value again which is not wrong that's very much true at the same times i want them to sort of acknowledge that how we may have we we have not really connected. Like I don't really know anybody who does sashiko for the meditation purpose. We 
do I know anybody who does the meditation I will ask my Japanese friend tomorrow in live streaming but they stitch because they are having fun I don't know anybody who is stitching for the meditation or mindful purpose mindfulness purpose uh, it does of course have the um, again byproduct or you know side effect of the sashiko stitching but doing sashiko for the purpose of that is quite new and also like a trend in the western society and when when i like to explain that how we would approach it it goes i thought that using the moita therapy in the uh, psychological treatment would be helpful to explain that okay so <laughs> sorry I'm not really it's it's coming the messages are coming I, don't, I should really yeah, shut shut it off I should shut it off I will shut it off I will shut it off I'm not gonna read this I'm not gonna read this while doing live streaming I But yeah, Sashiko has become a completely different term. Getting... Hmm, can I... Is it fair to say that Sashiko is still becoming the other term? So for those who might be worried, like wondering about what is the approach, the biggest difference is the kind of dualism in acceptance. In my understanding, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the Western value, which we very much follow as the Japanese, as the Japanese, we very much follow the Western approach to the, um, you know, daily things. But we consider the illness or, like, let's say, like a psychological illness as the bad thing, right? Something, like, something hostile some like enemy we consider the uh, mental illness as the enemy that's why we try to get rid of it or cure it fix it by taking the medications or by um, you know resting there are many ways to going to the counseling uh, talking to the counselors taking medication those are the way to fix it as with considering that the illness is the bad side and we on the good side so in order to be better in order to be more confident more healthy we are supposed to get rid of this bad side and then we can be healthier so that's kind of like a dualism in the western culture applied to the illness our sickness or mental uh, challenges and I we follow that <laughs> like I'm not saying like Japanese don't follow that but we follow that as much as we can but at the same time the same times about 100 years ago about 100 years ago the uh, Morita Shoma I think his name was Shoma um, start, developed the therapy or method or theory to accept accept is a little bit of um a little bit of simplified word so it's kind of difficult to explain that but i will try um the word for the japanese is the ariga arugamama we call it arugamama arugamama itself is as is so we observe it as is even if it like without defining if it's good or bad so that that's his approach that, that's the his that's the core principle of his approach and that helps quite many people i mean please i'm not a medical professional so please do not do take any radical change 
in your life without the professional help. If you're taking medication, never stop those medications without talking to the doctor. Um, but they, they do not, they, they did not, I believe that they started without medications, like depending on the medication, they might mix the medication as well as those methods right now, because medication itself is also not the subject of good or bad, it's just as is. So the whole purpose of that therapy, not a whole, but the core, very important part of the, the therapy is to accept what's happening. So let's say that I feel very depressed. I feel very depressed. And I try my best to feel better by resting, by taking medication, trying to control that depressed, depressed condition by changing it, by trying, as I consider the status of depression as the, you know, not a bad, well, actually, it's probably safer to say it's a bad thing. And I, as a person, wanted to fix it. In Morita's theor theory, it is not a matter of good or bad. It is just happening. So it's part of you. It's part of us. It's part of the like a natural reaction. There's a reason that we're feeling that. So instead of considering it as the enemy, it's not really the enemy. It's just part of you. It's just not the matter of good or bad. It's just happening. It's very unfortunate. It's very sad that it's making us undepressed or unhappy. At the same time, that does not define that it's the enemy. So they learn how to live with it as is. So it's like a, I think it's kind of close to the cognitive behavioral therapy, I guess, if I understand it correctly. Um, but that's kind of really similar to the Sashiko's principle too. The biggest thing I teach in Sashiko, the more I teach, the more confident I become that what I teach in Sashiko is completely different from what the other people, especially in Western cultures, are teaching in Sashiko. Um, I don't teach how to stitch one by one. I don't teach what is the answer for your stitches size. I don't really say anything about the rules. I explain the rules and I sometimes explain you know, recommend to follow some of the rules, but that's not a, that's not what I teach. That's not the core and essence of Sashiko stitching. The core and essence of Sashiko stitching is to learn, the, to to accept your stitches as is, and in order to, as long as you try to control the needles you do not reach to that level of as is because you're trying to control it. You're deciding, you're, you're continuously, we are continuously judging our result. Uh, that's not really as is. So what I teach is the form and the rhythm so that they can stop judging themselves. I mean, they can, of course, keep judging, but at the same time, by keeping the practice with the form and rhythm, they can stop not even stop. They can forget. We can forget to judge. We can we can kind of miss the moment to judge ourselves. And then finally, the time we miss the judgment, the stitches will be actually ours. Not somebody's definition, not somebody's answer. It's just simply, you know, ours. And that's the start. For me, that's the kind of start of Sashiko. Yeah, I, I, I can say that that's the start. Everything else is just... <laughs> I don't want to say they're not Sashiko, but because they are Sashiko, there's no definition of Sashiko. So if I have to categorize what Sashiko is, um, pretty much everything is Sashiko. But at the same time, if I really have to define the my preference in Sashiko, 
that's the beginning. And then in the process of talking to yourself, which means talking to your stitches, um, they will start understanding. We will start getting who really who we who we are. And then the stitches will start having carrying the personalities. Uh, they the stitches start representing who the stitcher is. And after that, there's nothing I can teach. It's it's pretty much they can. It's the journey to find who they are, without even realizing it. Because if they, <laughs> if they intend to find out who they are, it's not already, it's already a judgment phase. Because we try to be different, we try to fix it, we try to solve the issues. I like throughout Sushiko, I wanted to kind of pause that. You don't have to fix the issues. You don't have to fix the problem. You don't have to be good because there is no good or bad in the big picture. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's really not an easy way to approach. So... Um, Adrienne, thank you so much for the comment. This may be totally off the wall, but this is making me think about how many people I know who define themselves by how they look and getting plastic surgery, not accepting them themselves as they are, not accepting themselves as they age. Um, yeah, I hope that I um, I, do, I don't sound like fixing is bad personally personally i do not huh i do I, what do i think about plastic surgery i don't have any opinions about it um i sometimes wish that i could lose weight if, that would be great if I could lose weight without trying, um, but, you know, I'm not really chronically obese, so I don't think I can do that. I gained 35 pounds since I became a father. 35 pounds. The face you look at on this live streaming, I am totally different person, twin, like, before... Like, eight years ago, I was a different person. Now, you know, you see who I am. But the look-wise, I was completely... Like, 35 pounds is not... Not easy. <laughs> the, the saddest, like, mo the most scary part of this story is that I didn't go through the birth. I'm not the one who gave the birth. I was just there observing it. Well, I was in charge of cooking from the day one. But I did not the one who gave her the milk. I didn't have to breastfeed. I mean, I can't, technically speaking. So I did not have any reason to eat, yet I kept... I think it's a sympathetic... Like, I don't know what you name it, but that's the scary part. Anyway, um, I don't really have any opinions about the plastic surgery. And also anti-aging, anti-aging, I don't have that much, like, negative image on that neither. And at the same time, I know those people who are very much into it, and the what, that's what they spend money for. It's more like, you know, their obsession as well as their interest. At the same time, there are people who are against that. And I think there's no right and wrong in this conversation. It's purely preference. 
so I don't really have Hmm, that's a very good point I don't have like I honestly I don't have any good or bad image on that do I want to do it probably not because buying the fabric is has more priority to me than um, changing something I have because I'm kind of done right and technically speaking I don't have to I don't have to keep myself so beautiful although I sometimes be on the media that's not what I care or what they care so but the same times if they can feel happy if they can feel satisfied by doing some of those things plastic surgery anti-aging anti aging I think it's okay but if they are doing it because they feel they have to so that they can fix something negative then that's I feel sad for them <laughs> I don't know if it's okay to share this story it's quite personal um but when i got married to my wife a lot of japanese asked my wife why she married to me so, well the reason is that it is quite well, i don't know 10 years ago 12 years ago 2010 13 years ago god 13 years ago or even like 15 years ago, 16 years ago, it was not so common for the Asian students to date white college student. I mean, it's I'm not gonna say it never happened, right? It, it's, it was not impossible, but if there were any couples, like interracial couples between, let's say, Japanese and white, for that matter, any other any other people non-japanese or japanese um it was japanese girl and non-japanese um male so yeah i was in a very kind of rare case and <laughs> that is kind of just the beginning i'm about like five eight height and that's the average for the Japanese people, I think. As a height-wise, I'm really, really Jap like Japanese average. Not too tall, but not too short. Uh, my wife is about six feet, like 181, two centimeter. So it's a little bit of mismatched couple from the stand like really traditional standard. She's taller, I am shorter. And I have a pretty big face in comparison to her. Like she has like pretty small face. So many Japanese, even my friend kind of asked those kind of weird or actually rude question. From my wife's perspective, she was very upset when somebody asked her that question. I did not. I did not care about it much because I would ask myself like what's going on um but my whole point is that because I found somebody who are okay with who I am for that matter I don't really find that like if my if I marry to somebody who care how I look then I may be into those um, fixing mode. If I know that I was required, I was needed because of how I look like, I may feel like I am responsible to keep up, maintain that. So for that, if that was the kind of like a bond that I had, I probably would spend a lot of energy on that. But I know that 
Well, I think it's safe to say I know that we are bonded in somewhere else. I don't have that much strong need to invest in that. If I stop reading, that's gonna be difficult. Like reading, we love reading together, so the reading itself is like a bond between us. Um, if I stop reading, then we might lose that bond, but it's not gonna happen because I cannot live without the books. So I hope it, I'm kind of I'm talking about something very personal, and it's kind of like you know flattering. I'm just. I'm just saying I'm talking about my happy life, so you know may it's not very like Japanese things to do um I don't find it it for for that purpose I am very fortunate very very fortunate to have somebody that I can be who I am outlook wise inside I don't know we don't know. Um, but going back to Sashiko, well, you know, we are living in the place where we care about how we look, right? But at the same time, the social trend is changing that too, like lookism, and also the diversity in the how people look. Like a Victoria's Secret is changing the model and stuff like that. So we are changing it, and I don't know what is good or bad. Because I don't want to define what is good or bad. Um, we like something beautiful, but the, that definition of beauty is hugely dependent on our preference. So I am nowhere to um, define or judge anybody's decision. One thing I can say is that Sashiko is not. A way to define um, what is right or wrong. And there's a one phrase I don't really really like, and the phrase is like Sashiko is the stitching to embrace the imperfection. I don't really like this phrase because that's kind of opposite of what we're doing it. And in reality, we don't even go there. We don't even have to embrace the imperfection because the imperfection is the part of our ordinary. We don't really... The, that's not the matter. Sashiko is not the matter of being perfect or imperfect. As the result, we don't have to embrace the imperfection. That's a kind of simple explanation. Ah, ah, ah! Oops, sorry if the commercial got into Did I have a chance to cut it. Ooh. Maybe. I forgot about it. I kept talking about myself too much. But yeah, Sashiko is not a stitching to look for the answer. Um, of course one can look for the answer, but that I don't want them to define that's the whole picture of Sashiko. There are some Sashiko who they can follow as their choice to keep judging themselves. If they want to make beautiful stitches, like if they want to make the rice grain size stitches in every every single stitches to make beautiful pattern, go for it. That there is nothing wrong with it, but I just don't like it because I don't do it. It does. <clears throat> this may be a little bit of a shocking comment, but if they really care about the size of stitching, my question is why don't you use the machine then? Sashiko does not, well, hand stitching is a very important part of Sashiko, but Sashiko, some people ask me, like, is Sashiko machine, like baby lock Sashiko machine, 
is it part of the shiko or is it uh, kind of disrespecting you me no no it's not really disrespecting it's the way one culture change and sashiko itself is not might be different if the majority of the people choose the machine to enjoy sashiko that's the future um i don't think that's gonna be the future because um sashiko itself is completely different from the purpose of to what machine can do machine can do a lot of things but the purpose or process or reason we do sashiko is quite different from machine so but if the goal is to make even stitches machine can do probably a better job they don't even have to embrace the imperfection they can just enjoy the perfection we use the machine we don't use sashiko machine but we use sewing machine to fix it why because when we fix it when we kind of make it when we tailor it when we put it into the um, form like a jacket or bag it's much more reasonable to use sewing machine to accomplish the purpose there's nothing wrong with doing the hand stitching to make the jacket um, but sometimes that's not a really the necessity that's not a requirement so we have a lot of choice in this world and sashiko is not really a stitching in choices so we cannot follow the very original or f like primitive fundamental primitive purpose of sashiko but at the same time we can choose to respect as much as we can to respect how they would have stitched and one way to do that is to stop judging to accept what it is in order to accept we have to kind of try we it's, it's important to try as well but the try or like training practice they do not have to be something um, painful or something suffering and that's something different from me and other japanese culture because some of the traditional practice requires to go through something suffering which i don't want you to go through the suffering and i don't think sashiko was developed like that because it's more like ordinary like daily practice if that's more like a sophisticated uh, belly craft art something to be protected by the big organization yes probably they force you to go through something very very challenging sometimes painful sometimes i don't want to say agonizing but sometimes you know difficult Sashiko would no 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 I went through some difficult part but that's because of my family ideally in many cases in usual cases one doesn't have to go through the difficult phase and I don't want them to go through the difficult phase so I mean the, the difficult we have to kind of define what is the difficult phase um, trying for a few days or a few weeks few months to get the rhythm right or to find out is not going to be considered as the challenging time what i'm trying to say is that some of the sashiko not some sashiko some of the japanese culture requires them to go through unreasonable suffering like you don't have to go through that but you have to go through that for the purpose of suffering which i don't really I don't want anybody to go through that. Nope. So yeah, it's a, we have a lot of value today. And for that value, Sashiko is also in that a lot of choices and preference so i am very happy and you know okay how sashiko is introduced in english 
So, although I don't like the phrase of Sashiko is the stitching to embrace the imperfection, if somebody wants to do that, that's perfectly fine. I'm just saying I don't like it. I'm not saying that's wrong. That's not really following the Sashiko's principle. And that's really unfortunate that something, some people are misleading the others to go to that route which is going to take more time to get to what I'm doing. Um, but it's not really, I don't have any authority. Or I don't want to have those authority. I don't want to have those of saying that they are wrong because they're not. It's just not whole. It shouldn't be, it cannot be like a rule to follow that everybody has to follow. good example like, like analogy is everywhere because it's very similar to what we do as the orderly but again pizza 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 i always talk about pizza and you probably get tired of this talk but you know you don't decide one chain pizza as the only pizza like i kept eating the little scissors when i was in the college because that was cheap. I don't like, actually I have not had it since I became an adult. Wow, since graduation I have never had it. Wow. But when I was a in when I was in college, I could not afford um ah oh I forgot. Ah, pit. Starting with J. Something J. Oh, or like you know, there's a rank. <laughs> this is not a rank, but there's like a grade for the uh, pizza chain, right? Papa Jones. There we go. I could not afford the Papa Jones when I was the Papa Jones. I think it's right. So like Papa Jones, Domino's, Pizza Hut, somewhere, <laughs> Little Scissors. And for me, Little Scissors was the pizza for me. If I say, like, I when I get pizza, that meant that, you know, let's go there. And there's nothing wrong with it. It was very reasonable for me. It's very affordable. Um, it, it was great after, you know, drinking a lot of alcohol, being wasted. And then, you know, you don't pretty much taste anything, so any pizza was fine after that. For me, that was the pizza. But I don't want anybody to define that that's the answer for the pizza. For that matter, even Papa John's is not really the only pizza. There are a lot of, like, homemade... Um, when I ate a nice pizza in... I think it's family-owned restaurant in New York. I think that was in New York. I thought that was not a pizza. In my understanding, this is not a pizza. And, you know, then probably some people get upset. Well, this is the pizza and everything else is not. Uh, that's the preference. And there's no answer for that. We cannot make the answers. Because we have all the preference. By making the answers, we are neglecting to listen to those preferences. But because nobody else understands the other languages, sashiko, in sashiko, one type of sashiko is defined as the answer. And that's not... That's sad. They're missing something very, very important. Or not even important. Something more delicious, something more fun, something more fundamental. Oh my gosh, my eyes are so itchy. So yeah, this is what I'm trying to do, talking about Sashiko and acceptance and also not judging. 
I really hope that you learn how to, like, not even learn. I, I, I hope that you don't really judge your stitches doing sashiko. In Rochester, where I live, people have very different idea about pizza than in New York City or even Buffalo. Really? Wow, that's very interesting. What is pizza <laughs> in, Ro in Rochester? Wait, Rochester is like Syracuse, Rochester, and then Buffalo, right? So each place has different kind of understanding or definition style and it's very interesting like we accept the diversity we very much enjoy the diversity there nobody is very well not nobody some people fight for the answer but <laughs> we know that there's no such a thing as an answer for the pizza well, some people wants to define that <laughs> People who move here from out of town have very strong opinions about our pizza. Very thin, thick, thick crust. It's not deep, probably. It's probably thick crust. <sighs> I may have a strong opinion too. Yeah, <laughs> I like a thin. I like thin crust. But when I make pizza by myself, I sometimes make pizza from the scratch, like dough has to be a little bit thicker than the ideal thickness. But it's interesting. And so we do have a lot of difference, a lot of, you know, it's diversity, right? And then we don't really define, like if Sashiko can exist in diversity, it is quite interest quite important to include other japanese sashiko stitches um, it is very difficult because we have to be able to speak japanese for that and somebody has to be in between like me and uh, not that many people are doing that so it's not an easy process but that's sort of the must process to go through Adrian, just one question. You said that, like, you know, the thick crust is the culture in the city of Rochester. Is there any stories behind it? Like, why is it different? Were there some people who decided to eat more bread than sauce? Or and probably, probably there are stories for why. Uh, it can be as simple as that one of them decided to make it thick and then that's what they followed. That can be a big interesting story. But when things changes, uh, we often have stories. Uh, it comes with the same as Sashiko too. Sashiko may be completely different in the future and it will have the story for the changes. I just want that change and stories to be as sort of fair as possible. God, my eyes are so itchy. Let's go. Garbage put garbage plate garbage plate. <laughs> wow, so Rochester has a pretty unique food culture there. Well, I think when we talk about this kind of things, we have to define a culture too. What is the culture for us? What is the culture? Culture, culture, culture. What is the culture? We like we keep saying culture, culture, culture. Um, what is the definition of that? How can I 
Well, you know, when you Google it, we can get a definition, but definition itself is quite vague. It is understandable, but at the same time, it does not, like, it's understandable, but it does not click. It does, it's like, oh, okay, so what? So we have to kind of interpret the definition so that it's going to fit to us. <clears throat> So for me, for me, it's not the general definition of culture, but for me, the culture is the average or median, median information or common sense, like average of common sense for me is the culture. Sorry, not average, median, or well, both actually. Some people think extreme, other people extreme. We try to not to kind of we include them, but the majority of people think it as the orderly, and that is the part of the culture. So, for the if the Rochester case is the one example, a thick pizza can be the culture because the majority of people in Rochester think that it's a pizza. That's the culture. Of course, there are tons of other definitions, so um, I don't want to talk about. <laughs> It's not a it's not a linguistic class, so I'll leave it to somebody else. But something we don't have to explain. But for those who does not know anything about pizza, we have to explain what pizza is by saying that this is the crust, this is the sauce. But we know what a pizza is, so that's the common sense. And the common sense differ from place to place, age by age, people to people. And when we have a group, so-called city, town, you know, the community, when there is the community, then there's going to be the ordinary common sense. When they have the common sense, the average or median of that common sense is the culture. That's my understanding. So, Sashiko so is... If the majority of the, if if the majority of the Japanese people start thinking that Sashiko is the stitches to Im embrace the imperfection, I will follow. I don't think it's gonna happen, but I will follow. Because that's the Japanese culture. If the Japanese culture is to embrace the imperfection, there we go. We gonna do it. But it's not. None, none, nobody is saying that. That's the unfortunate result of interpretation of the wabi-sabi and translation and then another interpretation on the side of English. So, it's really sad, but somebody has to sort of speak out, speak up. The phrase embrace the imperfection does dilute the story of Sashiko and other handcraft. Yes. So, <laughs> it's my honest, th honest thing, right? By just saying that it's handcraft, it is already the action to embrace the imperfection. That's why we use our hand. Among so many other choices, if we have to use the hand, then we don't, you know, that's a different story, but if we live in a society where we have to use our hand only, they need a social service, like support. We have a choice. We are very much privileged to have choices to go through the handcrafting, and by choosing that, it's already embracing the imperfection. But... In, imperfection cannot be the reason no it cannot be I don't want the imperfection as the excuse to not to learn or not to try well Sashiko is the stitching to embrace the imperfection so we don't have to learn from somebody else I feel like that you know like you, you're okay with who you are you're okay with what you do is a true statement but it should encourage them to learn more instead of just, you know, stop learning. 
I feel like you know embrace the imperfection as the phrase to um please the student because teachers does not know what they're teaching oopsie that might be a little bit strong statement but that's my honest statement if you know sometimes you know student even cannot do that i mean a teacher cannot <laughs> if the teacher cannot do it you know the such in a proper way or not a proper way the way they believe in of course they have to use those phrases to kind of cover it up like some people some student might ask like why is your stitches are so not even and then teacher has to have the reason why the teaching teacher has to have the answer for that some people might ask student might ask I thought that such a cool beauty is the even stitches. Why does your stitches are not so even? Um, if the teacher has the answer to that kind of scary question, that's perfectly fine. But because they don't have the answer, well, they have answer, but they don't want to share that answer. Then they use they probably start using the embrace it. It is really true. We we do embrace the imperfection, but not that way. That's not the first word I would like to pass down. I want them to embrace who they are, but not the imperfection itself. So yeah, um, I'm trying to kind of elaborate what uh, Stephanie said, but pretty much Stephanie's summary is. <laughs> it was self-sufficient already so i didn't have to speak up this much but yeah it's really much the the loot it's simplified it's not that simple it is simple but it's not that simple <laughs> okay it's about 10 o'clock so i will stop live streaming after after this much thread if you're watching this live streaming from the archive, please leave the comment when you have a question. I will try my best to bring that back to the next live streaming. Uh, when I have a question, when I have a comment, it's much easier for me to talk about. Well, I became much better in doing the live streaming because I can talk one hour nonstop with the topic I bring without any script. So it's not gonna be a it's this English live streaming three years ago was like a chaotic. It was not I'm not gonna say it's a it was a bad thing, but um it's challenging. It has been challenging. Talking while stitching in second language is a little bit uh, without any specific theme, it was quite difficult for me. Even though I don't have to pay attention to what I'm stitching, stitch talking itself for one hour in second language can be quite hectic. So I'm getting better at that, so I can bring my t topic and then I can sustain myself for one hour or so. Uh, but the request is always appreciated. I think I am catching up all the requests so far. If I missed it, I apologize. I'll pick it up. <laughs> if you can write down, like, this is the second time I'm posting, so please don't ignore that for the next time. I will not. I will make sure to pick it up. It's. I don't have any, like, it's not intentional. It, like, if I ignore the comment intentionally i will probably not probably i will explain the reason i ignore the intentionally so like for example the question about technical perspective is not gonna be answered i say that from the beginning of this the beginning of this live streaming every day
<laughs> thank you, thank you, ladies. Um, please, don't, please. I did not realize that. I did not realize it until the end of the live streaming. Thank you for pointing out. I was living in a week ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was in a rush before this, I guess. Okay. Right. It's it's very fast. <laughs> Stitching and talking for one hour is quite like this. Um, I hope that some of the conversation today, some of the story today, made sense. Um, it is quite. I understand that it's very challenge, difficult to understand or even uncomfortable to understand or even impossible to understand as it is very difficult to explain too if i were doing it in japanese it, it could be easier and uh, probably understanding itself is very easier too um but we live in the different value different perspective background and that's how we are living until now so it's not easy to change it by just listening or by on and I don't, I'm not really asking you to change anything. I'm just asking you to just acknowledge it. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to follow it. You don't have to apply it. I'm not asking any of those. But just, you know, acknowledge that they are another world, another society, another culture, another, you know, values outside of what you have. And that's going to that's gonna be the best way to preserve this culture because... It is not my intention to bring everything back to the so-called Japanese Shikawai practice. It is good that it's happening, it's progressing in the different culture. It's just too fast or too westernized. Like There are not that many Japanese involved in that change. As a result, it is becoming something different, almost completely different. And it's, I said it's becoming, but it ha probably has become already something completely different. So, uh, what I do is pretty, sorry, something. It's Sakura's hair. What I, mm, Sakura's hair is here, why is that? Now, what I do might be very, very minor. Uh, as I said before, this can be a very much, very, very small stone on the big river. But I think I'm making a little small whirlpools, and thanks to you, it's getting bigger and bigger. So I hope that I will. No, I don't hope. I I will keep sharing that, and I hope that the more people will listen to us. Thank you for all of your thoughts. Growing up in a family that expected perfection, I have a lot of. Conflicting thoughts about this idea that I'm pondering and walking through. It is very difficult. <laughs> Sorry. I don't clean the cat. That's the, just this, you know. For my record, I do not clean the cat with my tongue, like the Anja does in the office. And I don't spit the hairball. Like, I'm not spitting the hairball. It's just hair, some hair on my. 
towel or something. <laughs> All right. Um, I hope that I will. No, no. I hope I will come back next week, and I hope you can come back next week as well. And I hope you have a very really good night, and I will see you next week. Have a good night. Bye bye.